Madhurandhagen went to see the champion Mathavi after the servant came and told him to bring mother. Once upon a time Madhurandhagen also had immense devotion to the mother. Now that devotion had turned into rage. I have never even heard about the mother who betrayed her son and spoke about the mother's party. Should such a mother come to him? To think about this, all the love in his heart turned into hatred and eventually burned and grew. His anger subsided a little when he saw his mother's face, which was unusually calm. Following the old custom, he bowed and stood up. May the wealth of Shiva increase and grow. Maharani blessed him and made him sit on the seat. That blessing pierced Madhurantha's mind like an arrow. Macharanthaka. Is my daughter-in-law safe? Is everyone safe in your father-in-law's house and the Thanadikari's house? Asked the mother. Everybody's safe. What's your concern? The son grumbled. Did you see the emperor before leaving Tanjore? How is his health at present? Asked the queen. I saw and took my leave and left. The emperor's body is deteriorating day by day. He is suffering more than his physical pain, said Madhurandhagen. What is it, child? What happened to make the emperor so distressed? Is it natural for those who have committed crimes, those who have done injustice, those who take away the property of others, to feel grief? What do you mean by this? What crime injustice has the emperor committed? What else is to be done? Is it not enough that he has sat for so many years on the throne where I should be? Isn't that a crime? Isn't that an injustice? Child! How did this poison come into your soul, which was as pure as milk? Who corrupted you? Asked the mother in a compassionate voice. I have not been spoiled by anyone. Why do you consider their son so naked? Do they think that I have no self-knowledge? No matter how wise one is, one's mind is corrupted by temptation. Isn't it Kalangari when those who dissolve dissolve? Wasn't Kaike's mind corrupted by Kuni's temptation? I've known how to spoil women's minds with that kind of debauchery. Madurndaka. Who are you referring to? Mother. What did you call me for? Tell me. You were present at the event a little while ago, weren't you? I was there. You brought a boy who was passing away on a stick. You put him on the throne and entertained him. He was so proud. Oh! Don't talk so rudely, child. The person who came was a youth, but a sage who had attained the perfection of Shiva wisdom. Let him be a great man, and if I speak less of him, will not his honor be lessened? Nor do I object to their royal honors being paid to that great man. Tell me why you have called me. Sembian Mathavi heaved a deep sigh. Then he said the change in your character astonishes me. I never dreamed that two years stay in the palace of Palyavatarayar would change you like this. Let me go, I must do my duty. I must try as far as I can to fulfill the promise I made to your father, my son. First, I must tell my story the story of my marriage to your father. Listen patiently. Madhurandhagen sat with his knees crossed and his hands firmly planted on the pedestal as a sign of patient listening. Sundaramurthy Swami along with his disciples was going towards our town. The Kana trees that flourished and blossomed around the Malabadi temple hid the temple. So Sundarar went without paying attention to the temple. Sundaram, forget me. He heard a voice in his ear. Sundarar looked around and asked did anyone say anything? He asked. The disciples said, no. They also said that they did not hear any voice in their ears. Sundar immediately inquired if there was any hidden temple nearby. Finding the Mazapati temple hidden among the Kana trees, he ran to the Lord's shrine and shouted, Banarmaniyani. He sang the hymn. After hearing this story, the Kana trees that flourished and blossomed around the Malabadi temple hid the temple. So Sundarar went without paying attention to the temple. Sundaram, forget me. He heard a voice in his ear. Sundarar looked around and asked did anyone say anything? He asked. The disciples said, no. They also said that they did not hear any voice in their ears. 
Sundar immediately inquired if there was any hidden temple nearby. Finding the Mazapati temple hidden among the Kana trees, he ran to the Lord's shrine and shouted, Bonar Maniyani. He sang the hymn. After hearing this story, the Kana trees that flourished and blossomed around the Malabadi temple hid the temple. So Sundarar went without paying attention to the temple. Sundaram, forget me. He heard a voice in his ear. Sundarar looked around and asked did anyone say anything? He asked. The disciples said, no. They also said that they did not hear any voice in their ears. Sundar immediately inquired if there was any hidden temple nearby. Finding the Mazapati temple hidden among the Kana trees, he ran to the Lord's shrine and shouted, Bonar Maniyuni. He sang the hymn. After hearing this story, he heard a voice in his ear. Sundarar looked around and asked did anyone say anything? He asked. The disciples said, no. They also said that they did not hear any voice in their ears. Sundar immediately inquired if there was any hidden temple nearby. Finding the Mazapati temple hidden among the Kana trees, he ran to the Lord's shrine and shouted, Bonar Maniyuni. He sang the hymn. After hearing this story, he heard a voice in his ear. Sundarar looked around and asked did anyone say anything? He asked. The disciples said, no. They also said that they did not hear any voice in their ears. Sundar immediately inquired if there was any hidden temple nearby. Finding the Mazapati temple hidden among the Kana trees, he ran to the Lord's shrine and shouted, Bonar Maniyuni. He sang the hymn. After hearing this story, finding the Mazapati temple hidden among the Kana trees, he ran to the Lord's shrine and shouted, Bonar Maniyuni. He sang the hymn. After hearing this story, finding the Mazapati temple hidden among the Kana trees, he ran to the Lord's shrine and shouted, Bonar Maniyuni. He sang the hymn. After hearing this story, the lines are stuck in my mind. I go to the temple often. I would stand in front of Nataraja Murthy and recite those lines endlessly. As the day went on, the Lord of Malapati took root in my soul. I made up my mind that I am going to marry Lord Shiva. I consider myself as Ume, Parvati, and Dadasayani. As they did penance to reach Lord Shiva as Padi, I will also do penance with my eyes closed. I hate it if someone talks about my marriage. This is how my childhood went. When I reached puberty, my soul became more devoted to Lord Shiva than before. My family and friends started calling me Pichi. I don't mind all that. After eating and sleeping at home, I spent the rest of the time in the temple. I enjoy picking flowers for worship and touching various garlands and wearing them to Lord Nataraja. I would close my eyes and meditate for a long time. In this way, one day I was meditating on the Lord with my eyes closed, and suddenly I woke up hearing a loud noise. Five or six people were standing in front of me. My eyes and attention fell upon one who stood in front of them. As I was meditating in my mind, I thought that Lord Shiva himself had come to possess me with his entourage. I stood up and bowed my head. Tears streamed down from his eyes. He should take care of this. In this way, one day I was meditating on the Lord with my eyes closed, and suddenly I woke up hearing a loud noise. Five or six people were standing in front of me. My eyes and attention fell upon one who stood in front of them. As I was meditating in my mind, I thought that Lord Shiva himself had come to possess me with his entourage. I stood up and bowed my head. Tears streamed down from his eyes. He should take care of this. In this way, one day I was meditating on the Lord with my eyes closed, and suddenly I woke up hearing a loud noise. Five or six people were standing in front of me. My eyes and attention fell upon one who stood in front of them. As I was meditating in my mind, I thought that Lord Shiva himself had come to possess me with his entourage. I stood up and bowed my head. Tears streamed down from his eyes. He should take care of this. I thought that he himself had come to possess me with his retinue. I stood up and bowed my head. Tears streamed down from his eyes. He should take care of this. 
I thought that he himself had come to possess me with his retinue. I stood up and bowed my head. Tears streamed down from his eyes. He should take care of this. Who is this girl? Why is she crying? A voice asked. My father's voice said, This is my daughter. She now has Shiv Bhakta like a ripe apple. She keeps coming and sitting in the temple like this, meditating with her eyes closed, chanting Batikam and shedding tears. The reply fell on my ears. When I looked up again, I realized that the person standing in front of me was not Lord Shiva, but someone from the royal family. I can't bear the shame. I ran from there and reached home. But my captor did not let me go. He came to our house with my father. Son. He is my husband and your loving father Kandradatitha Deva. After saying this, the great Maharani stopped for a while. Old memories brought tears to his eyes again. Wiping his eyes, he repeated. Then I came to know the details about your father. He sat on the throne of Cholanath not long ago. Since then, he used to visit many Shiv's Thalams and visit the temples. He was forty years old then. He had married at a young age. He had no intention of remarrying. He said that he would never marry again. He was fasting. But his holy soul was moved by the sight of this ghost. He asked my desire in the presence of my father. I was ecstatic thinking that Lord Shiva himself had come to possess me in human form. I expressed my full consent to marry him. We were soon married. As a result, your father regained his lost influence. Reaching Malavarayar he also received the title of Son. After your father and I got married, we both had a heart-to-heart -heart talk and came to a decision. We had decided to devote our lives to the service of Lord Shiva, and both of us did not like childbirth. There was an important reason for that. Child. I never dreamed that I would have to tell you all this. But I tell you because such a necessity has arisen. Give a little ear and listen carefully. Saying this Sempi Yan made a V side again. Madhurand Hagen also started listening with more effort than before. 